I'm Brenda and I'm with North Central Iowa Ag in the Classroom and I'm out here. We're gonna do a harvest farm chat today. I'm gonna to turn the camera around in a minute. We've got Scott Anderson with us and he will talk a little bit about the combine. He is doing corn. So he'll talk about the corn head and how the combine works. And then we're gonna go for a little ride in the combine. So I'll hand off the microphone. There you go. Turn my camera around. All right, there you, there you go. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm, as Brenda said, I'm Scott Anderson, and we're here today. And well, I hate to say it, but we're in Minnesota today, um, just two miles across the border. But since uh, since I live right on the border, this is not uncommon. But uh, right now, we're by the town of Keister, Minnesota, which some of you may have heard of before. Um, you can kind of see the water tower and the grain leg in the background there, but uh, yeah, we're out combining corn today. Um, it's uh, November 3rd, I guess, to date this, but yeah, we're down to about 300 acres of corn left, so we're getting pretty excited. Hopefully be done by Friday, not that it maybe means anything to you since this is live, but uh, so today we're out uh, combining. We have a 12-row Case IH corn head. Uh, it's a chopping corn head that we use um, to process our stalks down. So uh, when it comes to tillage, it uh, can bury more of the trash because this field next year will go back to corn again. So we want to get to uh, bury as much of the residue as possible um, is the idea with that. So we're using the chopping feature on it today and uh, uh, going from there. Uh, a little bit about the corn head itself, I guess. Uh, um, a corn head is a pretty, uh, I guess I would call, call it simple technology. Um, I don't know if you can see very good with the shadows, but so the rows of corn will, will come into the row unit like this. And uh, uh, in between the two stripper plates, there's uh, knives that come together and they, they uh, pull the the corn stalk down and uh, as it's coming down the ear, ear of corn will hit the plates and it pops the ear of corn off and then the gathering chains as they're spinning uh, takes them up the row unit and then it gets augered into the middle. Uh, underneath we had it's, it when I say chopping version it's uh, basically looks like lawnmower blades underneath there and they're just spinning really fast so as the stalk's coming down it just chops it up into into small pieces and uh, makes for a real nice field. Um, so with these large heads like this too, uh, they most, I think everybody runs an automatic header height system. So right here, there's three little sensors on, on, the, on the snoots. And as we're going through the, when the corn head comes down, it's as simple as these will uh, fold back like this and, using an electric signal, which uh, is beyond me. You guys can learn about that in class somewhere along the line, but uh, it uh, basically just allows the head to float where I have it preset off the ground, which is usually about two inches off the ground. And then farther over here, also have the feature to make my life a lot easier as we're harvesting, but uh, there's feelers here, and that's what I use to steer the combine through the field. So I don't, have to steer as we're combining through the field. It really makes it nice. And um, for me, and, and lessens a lot the operator fatigue. You know, when you're harvesting 12 hours a day, there's a lot going on and uh, you get tired over time, I guess, but this makes it a lot easier. So we don't have to uh, be steering when we're unloading on the go and everything that way. So um, yeah, as far as the combine, um, it's a uh, 8120 is what we have. Uh, I think the hopper holds like 350 bushels of corn, uh, which would be, uh, yeah, I guess I'd have to check my math to see if that's right, but it'd be 20 to 22,000 pounds uh, of corn or beans, whatever we're harvesting for the day. Um, so, and then as we're, to keep the machine running, we uh, dump on the go. Uh, so we have a grain cart that holds a thousand bushels. We load it up. Um, and he runs to the semis to keep everything nice and everything moving, I guess, that way. So how old is your combine? This is an old combine. It's 10 years old. I'm trying to how old are fourth graders? They little 
they about 10 years old or a little over, I guess. But okay, yeah. yeah, so I guess think of it that way, kids. But this was brand new. I guess we bought it when it was two years old, but we've had it for a while. Um, it's getting quite a few hours on it. and We're exploring the opportunity to maybe find something else, but uh, upgrade a little bit. But yep, that uh, it's a older machine, but still works good. Uh, it all will harvest about 3,400 acres this year on it. And so far, knock on wood, it has not let us down. So um, yeah. How fast does the combine go? So in the field, we'll, we'll be combining about uh, four miles an hour. Um, that's a nice steady speed. If you get going too fast for us, we can't uh, keep uh, the grain cart to the semi and back and try to get in a nice flow. So hopefully we don't have to stop. Um, keep everything moving that way, so. All right, we'll go for a drive? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> We've got Marvin the green cart right next to us here. Um, yeah, again, 1,000 bushel green cart. Uh, we've got a little, we call it the scoreboard sitting on the side, if you can see it behind the mirror, but it tells, as I'm dumping, how many pounds are on the, the cart. Um, so I'm gonna start dumping here. And, Oh, I've never seen that before. Yeah, yeah, it's nice for uh, hauling loads of town. And, um, so you can try and keep it halfway, halfway legal that way. But what do you mean by that? Keep it legal. Uh, so limit? yeah, so there's weight limits on the road. Um, in Iowa right now, there's a harvest exemption, so I think you can go up to ninety thousand pounds total on a semi. Um, normally it's 80,000 pounds, which most trucks that gives you about 950 bushel of corn would be the weight there. But uh, um, yeah, the auger itself uh, on loads, it, it's like 2.2 bushels a second or something. So um, it's, it's a lot faster than you could shovel or uh, could catch in a pail. So a lot of stuff happening there. Um, the corn is pretty dry right now. Um, it's averaging about 18%, which is nice. Um, we, we do have to dry it uh, because to take it to market, it needs, ideally it's 15% uh, or under, otherwise you pay a dock. Um, that's, they call it number two yellow corn. It needs to be uh, 56, 000, or 56 pounds of test weight. Uh, so a bushel is, everything's calculated off of uh, a bushel being 56 pounds. And then uh, the moisture level and then your um, FM, which would be uh, cracked or broken kernels. And then if there's actually damage, uh, heat damage or mold or something, that can also be on the, the kernels themselves. So we're getting here, we're gonna have uh, 56,000 pounds, just about exactly here on the end. And we'll send Marv back to the truck and he'll, he'll go dump and hopefully catch back up to us. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it here though, This the farm we're on is kind of a little wildlife refuge, we'll call it. Over the hill, there's a nice creek, um, and Minnesota deer hunting starts this weekend. But also, right in front of us up in that tree, I don't know if you can, how good you can see it, but there's a bald eagle sitting up in that tree. And there were two of them there earlier, but I think there's only one sitting up there now. But uh, yeah. And then you may wonder, so all this grass that's planted around the, the cornfield, um, we, it's uh, pretty light in those areas is like a sandier soil. So it really doesn't produce uh, very good crops. So we uh, enrolled it in the conservation reserve program or CRP. It's a uh, government program that pays you to take your undesirable land out of production, I guess. And, uh, so that's that's what that is. It's a pollinator mix. So there's lots of honeybees and whatnot around the, the field when um, during the during the year.
Yeah, we could talk a little bit about the technology in here. So I use a uh, precision planting 2020 monitor. Um, and then I have my iPad in here as well that uh, actually collects the data and then uh, via the cloud um, sends it uh, or makes it so I can read all the data and using either my cell phone, uh, my home computer, or I got another iPad at home with the app on it that we use to, to keep track of what's going on. Um, and then I use the same monitor in the planter. So if you're using like two different varieties in a field, uh, when we come and harvest then it automatically tracks uh, how that hybrid does as far as yield, um, I guess, because that's ultimately what we're, what you're always shooting for is uh, you want a top yield or what, what yields the best is what we're looking for. Um, but then you can also, it overlays it in a soil maps. Uh, so you can kind of see how a hybrid uh, reacts to different soil types. Um, in the field, there might be a uh, hole oh, around here. It's probably normal to have five to 10 different soil types through a field. Um, and uh, hybrids react differently to those soils. And then uh, there's also water that comes into play. This field was kind of challenged in some areas. We were, we were uh, short on water this year. It didn't rain a whole lot. So uh, in those areas, the yield isn't as good, but that's, you gotta have water uh, to grow, to grow crops. So, um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, Overall, the field is still doing pretty good. Um, I guess right now, it's in a, in a quick, this is the, our live yield as we're going through the field. I picked a good time to start talking about it. Uh, um, but as we're now, it's averaging 212. It's pretty good. We always, you'd hope for more, but uh, you can kind of see on the map how variable it is. You come up over, this is where, we're at in the combine and we're going to come up to a hilltop that's a little lighter ground. The darker the green, the, the, the better the yield is. Um, and then as the, the yield falls off, the color scale goes down through the greens. And then when you get to red, I guess I've got red as 140 or below. It's kind of where it's at right now. Yeah, so that's a kind of a brief summary of what's happening with the technology. Um, so yeah, well, uh, half, half mile, Maybe that's what shorten that up. So generally in Iowa it's pretty nice and square. So farms are usually uh, broken out into quarters, which would be 160 acres or 80s, which would be an 80 that are half mile, one pass across the field. Um, and this one it's broken up a little more. So we're a little shorter than that. Do you have any livestock? I do not have livestock. Um, I guess most of the corn that we're harvesting today, most of it goes to, uh, we end up hauling to the Christensen feed mill south of Thompson. It gets ground up and used for pig feed. But we do also haul some corn over to Lakota to the ethanol plant um, that everybody in Buffalo Center should be familiar with. And uh, we do also, I guess, go to Hanlon Town to the ethanol plant there as well. But uh, Lots of pigs in the area means lots of pig feed, which takes a lot of corn. So, so you said you are having to dry your corn. Did yeah. you go to your farm yeah. for that? Yes. Yeah. So at uh, my farm, we do have uh, on-farm storage with bins and uh, grain dryers. Um, we use uh, liquid propane gas, like you'd use to heat your house. Um, or you use added our corn dryer as well uh, pretty simple it's a, um the corn goes to the top it's uh, runs and has uh, columns all the way around in a circle um through the middle we have fans there's fans running with uh, burners um that are producing the heat so how long does it take 
dry. Um, the corn that you put in today, when will it be ready to? It should. A lot? It should be out. Uh, so it the dryer runs about seven hundred bushel an hour. So we're harvesting when we're running good. We're harvesting about thirty five hundred bushel an hour. Um, so we can usually pick ten to twelve hours a day for what we have for wet wet holding space. Um, but yeah, the theoretically, the grain that gets harvested today will be through the dryer by tomorrow morning and it into the bin, ready to, to get cooled off because it dumps out of the dryer at, say, 90 degrees. Um, so to store corn, you really want to get it nice and cold. So try and get it down to 20 or 30 degrees, just kind of stops all microbial activity, you know, it just, um, yeah, so my yield monitor, I use a, uh, it's a uh, precision planting 2020 monitor. Uh, all the modern combines come with a, a OEM, I guess they call it, which is their the factory version, but I guess I use this because I use the same setup in my planner. Um, it monitors my planner and runs that. Um, as we're going, but then uh, I guess the main thing, what I really like about it is that uh, on the fly, uh, if I if I'm in a field or something and I'm planting uh, two different varieties, as we're going across the field, when I come back to harvest it, to to really track that variety and how it how it did on on uh, different soil types and, uh, across the field or whatever, it uh, automatically does that for me as I'm in the field. Um, And then as well, using the iPad, I guess all the data goes into the iPad or connected to it. And then we use the use the cellular signal that, that ships to the different in on the, the internet. I don't know how else to explain. This would be a yeah. more keen on under with the field view app or at home on my regular computer, or whatever. I can look up and see how a field did, and uh, um, it has a couple of neat features. I mean, uh, you can uh, pull up the map and draw a circle, and and it'll uh, tell you what how the field yielded in that area, uh, clear down to the, the varieties and then even down into the soil type um, going across the field. So it's just, it's a tool that I like like to use. It kind of gives us an idea to, uh, so we can try and better match a hybrid to a farm. We're getting ready to, we're going to call it close enough here, I think, just for uh, production's sake. But we're going to send send the grain cart to the, um, we're going to have about 54, 55,000. Can't quite see the little scoreboard deal there because it's behind the mirror, but uh, that's where we're at. That, that'd be a nice, nice load to send to the semi. Oh, funny, get out of the way. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we got that land done. We're going to count out another one here. I guess when I say lands, like we have a 24 row planner we're 12 so i like to do um, i do like a six round land so but i gotta count i can count and got the, uh, i've got my auto steer box set up so i can be lazy and i don't have to get out and count but i gotta remember to look at it so i count the count the numbers going across so two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
31. So we were on swath 22, and I want to go over to 31. So new land. There's about 20 acres left in this field. And uh, to keep the, the auger to the outside, basically, so you can dump it at one time, I, I count over the and open up a land. So I'll, I'll make uh, three rounds, which a round is down the field and back. I'll make three rounds turning to my left or the inside, and then I'll we'll go and we'll make three rounds going. Makes it so the combine can keep running, um, and the cart can run alongside you, and and dump when. I It was a little coolish that day, but uh, everything's turning out. But so, uh, in, in corn terms, this, the corn's getting kind of tired. You'll see um, in the field, corn's dead, but it's also starting to break off at time in places. And if it was under drought stress, we're going to come up into a, a lighter spot, lighter soil spot that uh, uh, the corn tried to put as much as it could into the year, but unfortunately then it cannibalized the stock. And then uh, that just makes the stock weak. Um, so then when the wind blows or whatever, you know, it makes it harder for the, the stock to stand. Did you get any storms or any bad weather this summer? No, we were we were lucky. We never really had any really heavy wind, or there was some hail around. And um, weather-wise, we were very fortunate. Besides the fact that it, so so yeah, they were into a nice sandy, gravelly spot, which is just kind of part of this farm. It just is what it is, but. Uh, so the corn definitely is not as good and it's breaking off. But. Are you surprised at the yield you're getting this year with the dry condition? Yeah, overall, I, we're, we're real happy with it. I mean, in, in August before it rained again, I think if somebody told me we would have got 200 bushels of corn, we'd be happy. And, um, you know, all of our farms yielded over 200. We had some that were close to actually set records, which I, I still haven't figured that one out yet, but uh, so yeah, I just, I can't complain just how fortunate we are. And uh, as, as anywhere, there's other areas that had it a lot worse than we did. I don't like to see it, you feel bad for the guys. And then there's areas that did better than we did, but that's, that's just kind of, Kind of how how the world works, I guess. Some are going to have it better, and some are going to have it worse. So.